My name is Steve Baskoff. I'm with the Digital Scholarship and Communications Office of the Jean and Alexander Hurd Libraries at Vanderbilt University. In this lesson, we're going to talk about installing a programming environment. Most of the lesson is actually going to be focused on deciding what environment you should use, but we will also point you to some resources that will help you with the installation process itself. You should be aware that this is a part, that this video is a part of a larger series of videos called Code Graph. If you uh, found the video by some other means, you might want to visit our Code Graph landing page at vanderbilt.lt slash Code Graph. As I said, one of the things you're going to need to decide is how you actually want to code. If you've read, if you've looked at the videos in the earlier part of this series, you'll know that there's a lot of different ways that you can interact with the uh, coding environment. So I'm going to run through some of the different options and then we'll look at them in detail. If you're learning to code in R, there's really only one recommended option and that is using RStudio to write and debug your code. If you're learning to code in Python, there's a lot more options. One of the options is to write the Python code using a code editor like Visual Studio Code and then run the code, uh, the uh, code scripts that you have written at the command line interface shell. Um, this is a perfectly fine way to write code, particularly because code editors like VS Code are very full featured, but um, it's not really recommended for these lessons because I think for beginners, it's easier to use one of the other methods. Another really good option <clears throat> is to use a full featured uh, integrated development environment like Spider, uh, which we demonstrated in an earlier lesson. This is a great way to write and debug code because it has a lot of features built into it for the debugging part. Um, so if you are interested in doing that method, it's perfectly fine. However, in these lessons, we'll be demonstrating things using Jupyter Notebooks. We'll also make the code available in Jupyter Notebooks. So although this is a really great way to code, um, it's not actually going to be the way that we are demonstrating it in these lessons. The two ways that you can use the Jupyter Notebook system are to either download the notebooks locally on your own computer and then do the coding there, or you can use one of the cloud-based systems to run a Jupyter Notebook there. There's actually two of them that we will be talking about. Uh, the option of downloading the notebook to your local computer actually probably works the best, um, but it is a lot more complicated upfront in learning how to set things up and also downloading the notebooks. If you're interested in just click and go, one of the cloud-based systems is probably a better option for you.